And I know all of you out there have a relative, perhaps a loved one with an implant in some part of his or her body. While many individuals experience positive outcomes, we all in medicine know it's important to be aware of the potential dangers and risks associated with silicone implants. So would you tell us the difference between, first of all, silicone implants and saline-filled implants? Yes, of course. As you probably know, there are no living organisms on land, in the ocean, or in the air that are capable of making compounds that contain artificial silicon carbon bonds. Now, so silicone ends with an E, mm. but the silicon, which is an element on the, on the table of all elements, including carbon and oxygen and sodium. The periodic the, table. The periodic table, right? Yes. Uh, and, of course, chloride and magnesium and even gold and silver. And they keep your skin cells from flying off into outer space. Oh, so the silicon itself is an essential ingredient in the human body, but not silicone. No living organisms, not humans either, have the capacity to make a silicone molecule. This was the invention of chemists a hundred years ago when they created the field of organosilicon chemistry. So then we can expect that placement of silicone or silica in the body will create a problem. And the body has a very limited way of dealing with foreign objects. As you probably are aware, when you put a foreign object in the body, <clears throat> one of three things is going to happen. Either the body will destroy it. If it can't destroy it, it will try and excrete it. And if it can't excrete it, it will try and isolate it. And that's where the problem comes in. 